Right, here we go. Um, this is tablature. There's many different ways to write down music. Um, there's stave notation, also known as standard musical notation for many instruments, like violin and clarinet and stuff. Um, but tablature is popular for guitar and bass guitar and sometimes other fretted string instruments, but it also works really well for something like a six string lyre. So what have we got? Um, at the bottom there we've got the beats, um, as I said about before, we'll come back to that. Right, we've got six horizontal lines. They're dashed lines in this case, they don't have to be dashed, that's just how the word processing is working out. But they represent the six strings of the lyre. Now this piece of music is written down for a lyre where the highest pitch string is furthest away from the musician's face and the lowest pitch string is closest to their face. Not everyone has it that way. Um, I do it that way. Uh, I could rewrite the music so it was the other way up. But the reason for this is simply that as you look at the strings, they should be in the same order as where you look at the tablature. So here, this is at the bottom of your vision, that string there, and that represents the string that is the lowest in your field of vision, which is the one that is closest to your face. It's slightly complicated, it's the highest vertically, but this works. Right, okay, so we've got the dashed lines, we've got these vertical lines, they're bar lines. Um, music works so that there's bars and beats, at least usually, it doesn't have to, you can do whatever you like, but this is how it normally works, and there's very often four beats to the bar, and this affects the emphasis that the music is given, and the type of symmetry and shape that it has. Um, it just makes it easier to understand, basically. It's a bit like leaving a gap between paragraphs, but not quite the same. So those are the bar lines. You don't actually do anything for them, particularly, other than perhaps give a different emphasis to how hard you hit the strings. Now, we've got those lines representing strings, and on them we have um, little O's. Now, the O, in this case, represents the sounding of a string on the lyre. So, oh, I should explain, time goes from left to right, yeah? And the lyre strings are arranged vertically, so in a snapshot of time, Everything that's happening is in a vertical column. Just this one. This bit here comes later. Uh, oh, you can't see that anyway. Ha! <laughs> Sorry. That's on the page. There's a bit lower down you can't see. Don't worry about it. Now, this vertical column here is a snapshot in time that happens on the first beat of the first bar. Now you can look. There's an arrow pointing upwards. This means strum away from your face. Um, that technically means you're strumming downwards, but it makes sense to draw it that way. At least I think it does. If you have a problem, send me a postcard or an email or something. Or a message carried by a knight upon a fine horse. And I'll consider what you've said and possibly change what I'm doing. So, here we go. This snapshot in time, that says you strum upwards. Uh, sorry, downwards, upwards, whatever, away from your face. <laughs> now this O, that means that the string closest to your face is sounded on the first beat of the bar. The dash on the next line, no O, so that string's not sounded. Next line there's an O, so it's sounded. And the next three, there's um, just a dash, so those strings aren't sounded. Now you could the way you play block and strum, basically all the strings that you aren't sounding, you're touching with your fingers. So but another way to look at it is what this means is you don't touch the string closest to your face, you do touch the next string along, you don't touch the next string after that, and you do touch those last three. Um, 
you could write it the other way around so that you write down the strings that you touch and not the ones you don't. But I think this is clearer because there's less strings that you're not touching compared to the ones you are touching. Right, um, I think I really need to show how this works physically on the instrument. Right, okay, so the first beat of the first bar of a quiet pool in the woods. Right, <clears throat> so looking at the horizontal line at the bottom, there's an O on it. So that means that you do play the string closest to you, closest to your face, that is. Um, okay, so that means you don't damp it. The next um, line, there's a dash. Now that means that you do damp it. So I'd say take this finger, the thumb, I'd call it finger number one for fun, um, and you just touch the string gently like this. You don't need to put force into it really, just touch it. So when you pluck it, you don't get much of a sound. Compare that. That's an O on the tablature. That's just a dash. Now, um, the next string on the, tab on the first beat of the first bar the next line, it does have an O, so you do sound that, you don't block it. There you go. And then the next three lines, going upward still, they're all dashes, so you block all of those three. Now, here we go, there's this finger here, that's handy, let's put that one there. This finger there, that's finger number three. Finger number one, finger number two, finger number three, finger number four. There we go. Uh, for a lot of tunes, you can make do with just blocking with four fingers, sometimes less, sometimes you need to five. Sometimes you have to use the thumb to block two strings. But, yeah, here we go. For this tune, you only need four. Not the only way you can play it works for me. Right, so, having got our fingers in position, you now strum. I use a plectrum. Um, it's generally reckoned people did use a plectrum in the distant past. Uh, they didn't use plastic. It probably wasn't yellow. But here you go. Um, you can probably get something really authentic somewhere. But this is my little pick. Oh, help, I can't see myself. There we are. Right, and then hold it in your hands. Um, hold it with the thumb and I'd say two other fingers. Oh, well, like that. That's what I'd say. Here we go. Now, just hold it um, kind of at 90 degrees to the strings, I suppose. And then just, well, maybe not quite naughty. Here we go. And then just, yeah, put an angle, in fact. Ha! <laughs> Here we go. And strum downwards, as in just basically move your hand downwards, but so the pick contacts the strings. Here we go. There we go. That's a, a strum when it's been blocked. If you didn't block any strings, you get this. But with this tune, we've got some strings blocked. There we go. Now, as well as strumming downwards, you can also strum upwards. And you can make it much faster as well. What, how fast you want to strum depends on the piece of music and the effect you're trying to create. A lot of the time, I strum quite fast, like... ...kind of thing. Um, Right, now, in this particular piece, A Quiet Pool in the Woods, uh, you only ever strum in that direction, which is represented by an upwards arrow, as in the arrow points away from your face, so you're strumming away from your face. In some of the other pieces, there'll be a downwards pointing arrow, which means strum towards your face. Now, here we go. So we've got our first snapshot of time is this position here with the blocking hand and um, strum. Woo! Right, the next snapshot of time, um, there's still an O on the bottom line, so that's still open. There's still a dash on the second. Oh, sorry, I should probably should explain this a bit more. You only actually make a noise when the music tells you to, and if a piece is just block and strum, you only actually make a noise when there's an arrow on the page beneath the tablature. In this piece, all the arrows are pointing upwards. So, although you could 
have had some noise occurring between the first and second beats of the bar. In this piece you don't. And you can see that from how the uh, first arrow is on the first beat of the bar and the second arrow is on the second beat of the bar and no arrows between there, between the two. So we go to the second beat of the bar and it says um, O on the bottom line so that's open then a dash on the second line so that's blocked. Now this time there's a dash on the third line. It was open last time with an O, this time a dash, so we block it. So the easiest way to do it is move this finger to that string. Now it's blocked. Now um, the next line, which is the fourth from the bottom, it's got an O, so that's open, which is brilliant because we've already moved that finger from there to here, which already made that open. So that's nice and easy. The next two lines, they're dashes, so they're blocked. Okay, so the second beat of the bar, this second snapshot in time, is just right. There we go. And you can go through that process again, so that on the third beat of the bar, it's like this. That's how it's blocked and not blocked, and it sounds like when you strum it. Right. And basically, you can just go through this process. To start off with, you probably need to do it really slowly and look at what you're doing between the beats. But when you get faster at doing this, when you learn the piece and know where to put your fingers, you can play it faster. So, for example, the first bar, the first four beats of that tune go...